Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim TV video. This is Mark uh, today. We're taking another look at the Tees Valley line. We're going to take a trip from Saltburn through to Darlington, driving the Class 101. A bit different to the first one that we did in that it's actually daylight and uh, it's uh, the Class 101 that we're driving. And this is our train that's arriving now. We're going to be working the 1648 from Saltburn to Bishop Auckland as far as Darlington. That is our train that's just arriving now. And we're taking over this. For the one. A few of our passengers just arriving. Let's let ourselves in the cab. We've got about six minutes to when it's set off. We'll take a look around the station. We need to wait a minute, I think, by the looks of it. It still wants me to take control of the previous service. There we go. Okay. So first things first, we need to get the whole thing set up. We've still got the tail lights and everything set on this end. So what we need to do, get the driver's seat. Change the marker lights to white. Destination to on. That's all set. Now we need to set the destination blind to Bishop Auckland, so it's going to be a long way in this direction. Parkland, there we go. So let's just have a look, inspect the front to make sure we've got the uh, correct destination, the correct lighting showing. Which we do. So now let's go down the back and we need to take off the headlights from the rear. Take the mark lights off. Change that to red. That one to red as well. On this end, we're still saying salt burn, so we need to again change the destination blind to Bishop Auckland. And I think this is something really cool about Train Sim World is that you can do this. I know you can do it in Train Simulator anyway, but you can actually feel like you're actually doing it rather than Train Simulator, you just press a button usually. Oh, shut the cab door. Got that a bit low, but it uh, looks okay. Well, we'll just pretend we're checking the train whilst we're going down here. Jump back in the cab. There we are, we have all ready to go virtually. Due off at 16:44. So let's uh, 16:40. Yeah, so I think four minutes. Just have a little look around the station. Got to be honest, I do like the atmosphere. I like the seagull sounds and everything. It's pretty cool. Nice detail on the station. Got that uh, sort of unkempt look about it. I would expect it to have. I've got somebody over here walking into a grip bin by the locks, which is not entirely realistic, but. Maybe he's being on drugs or something. Can you go out of the station, I wonder? News Express. Middlesbrough. What's that say? Middlesbrough immediately down into match 16 investors. <laughs> That's quite good though, have they actually uh, done the real sort of newspapers? Can't go out into the street. Wasn't necessarily expecting to. Good to see some sort of realistic shops as well, although there seems to be the same shop about five times in the one row by the looks, but it's good to see some realistic ones like a chip shop and stuff like that. Sort of thing you'd expect. What have we got over here? The route map. That's quite nice. Let's have a look down the side. Yeah, you can't go down the side, that's a shame. 
I like the fence as well, it's sort of like not just straight posts, some of the posts are uh, wonky. That's nice attention to detail. Not sure about that, you can see straight down there and there's like nothing. Otherwise it's pretty decent. Pretty basic station, a couple of sidings. As I was saying in the other video, it's probably the sort of place you have a lot of fun in a multiplayer event. Assuming we do eventually get multiplayer, you can just imagine coming out of here with your mates and stuff. Having a bit of a gala going on. That looks pretty good. That's a nice view. Good bit of cluster as well on the track. So let's go get ready, we'll do off in one minute. Get in the cab. It's a warm day, so we better open the uh, window. off in 45 seconds. I wonder if that's actually going to happen or what? what's going on with it. I presume it'll change it bang on the, the dot. So this is the free car variant of the class 101. Assume we can't pull the blinds down. Of course with the Transpennine route you got a two car version of this unit. I really enjoyed driving the version that came with the route. So we're loading passengers officially now, we've got the road. That's quite cool how the signal stayed red until the departure time. Probably not exactly realisticness but uh, was good all the same. I'm well, already a minute late enough to departure because of this thing here saying load passengers, which is a bit uh, weird. So we are calling at most stations en route, I haven't actually checked the timetable to see how many stations we're calling at, but I suspect it's probably all of them with a peak hour service, just at the start of the rush hour. So now we're waiting until 16.50 apparently. are closed. Got the unit into gear. Release the brakes. And away we go.
next stop's mask for the service. Nice uh, flange noises that I can hear at the moment. Put the DST on. Or the AWS rather. Coming on the left here is the line from Bowlby. Skin and Grove, the former line to Whitby. I love the uh, track drying noises on the shooting, it has to be said. They do sound good. I think the tractor and noise is probably my favourite thing about tracking sim when it comes to uh, audio. It do sound uh, really nice. Give it power. Due up mask in two minutes, just over a mile to go. The sounds do sound really good. The engine sound sounds a bit iffy, but. I noticed with this unit as well, there seems to be a lot more play in the bogey. Now that's realistic, but in the 37 there seems to be barely uh, any play in the bogeys in comparison. We're just approaching Mask now, which is our first uh, station stop. A bit strange the brakes there. They were on not vacuum all the way down there, and then they suddenly seemed to strengthen whilst being on um, not present not not PSI vacuum, which is weird. It should you know the, the the braking power should be constant whilst the pressure's on zero. It shouldn't change after I get to zero, unless it felt that way anyway. Slightly late, possibly leaving here. Nice foliage detail. Mm -hmm. 
next location a long back. Only another half a mile. I messed the gear change up then to uh, because I didn't let it drop into uh, the right range of RPM for the gear change. It didn't change. Get the brakes applied. Nobody's decided to get on yet. Oh, it's just somebody getting off, that's why. Signal box. It's missing a sign. I'm nearly sure there's a sign on this box, or there was when I went. That was 2010 when I went, but. Pretty certain there should be a sign on this box somewhere. We're ready to depart. Next stop, red car east. The red car is just about a mile and a half. And what sort of detail we have over here in these gardens? Pretty decent. Sort of par for the course, really. Bounce, you can actually see the bounce on the uh, track panels as are going along. See the sort of roll in the body and everything. It's cool. now to uh, Red Car East Station. From there we'll go for all the industrial areas. And the approach to Middlesbrough.
Pokey stop. For the platform. Interesting. Apparently, I left the brakes off. Busy train. It'd be nice to see some uh, better skies for this game. I think. When you look at the uh, sort of thing that most games can do these days, I feel like these flat sort of textures are worse than what we had in Train Simulator 2019. So. And they don't even, like, the sun doesn't go in when the, the clouds go by. You know, the sun goes behind the clouds, the sun doesn't go in. Stop then to Medcar Central. Very residential area. Shortly run into a 60 mile an hour section. We won't reach that speed though because we're stopping in another three quarters of a mile. Shame the barriers don't appear to go. Considering that's been doable in Train Simulator 20 whatever for what ten years, we can't apparently get barriers to go up now. But okay. Good to see this style of crossing included. I have one of these, uh, they used to have one of these. In fact, they have actually still got one exactly like this at Castleford. Ah, no off. Shame they've sort of left fencing of, like, just uh, quite open at both sides, not fully fenced off. It's a nice asset. Decent quality station. Apparently that's a spawning point. Overall, I think it looks pretty decent. Does still look a little bit sort of dead and at the roads. It's for sure. I'm sure that there should be like some cars going up and down here or something. It looks good though. The next stop, Red Car British Steel.
So we're coming up to the junctions with all the uh, lines around Red Castile. There's caravan side there. Well, I'll say nice. I don't think Gabriel will stay there. You know what I mean? Some allotments. It's an unusual idea for a route, but I think it's a really nice sort of idea. I love the industrial effect here with all the chimneys and everything. I think they've nailed that sort of look. Red Car British Steel Station. Interesting fact about this one is that in 2017-18 this was the least used station in Britain. So, was it more used in the 1980s? It doesn't even have any official road access as far as I know. Interesting that in 2017-18 only 40 people entered the station, yet in 2014-50, 1,570 went through here. I'm not sure if there was some job cuts or something around then. Possibly. Either way, it's not a very well used station. So next stop, South Bank. A uh, three mile run to there. Go past all the drone sidings and stuff in a minute. Shining now where all the freight lines are shining from the left there, where the terminal is. You go down there with the 37, that's where we went down in our other videos. And the freight lines are going to See a lot of steel wagons on the left hand side. You can actually see the uh, flames there on top of the uh, steel works. Pay attention to detail. Should hit line speed here at fifty five in a minute. Pay 
have uh, sevens in the yard. In fact, there's a vehicle wagon that's just about it. I was just about to say it'd be nice to see some activity. to go into the 50 mile an hour section, 55 mile an hour section. Non-stop through here. photos in real life taken on here, this little bay with all the pipes and stuff across the top from this area, class 31s and 37s. I think a 31 would be really good for this route actually. I'm not sure how common they were around this area, up this end. Just a train going in the other direction does. So this will be the next one out of Saltburn, presumably the 1748 departure from Saltburn. Somebody inside the train or somebody on the track. Oh, we got somebody there a lot. Everyone get off on the other side. It is middles, but they do what they want around here. That's a random use for signal mox. Not sure if that's where it's meant to be. It does look as if they've got the same sort of asset, sort of generic made rather than actual signal boxes for a real signal box. So yeah, this is the uh, next working out of Saltburn, the 1748 return. I wonder if that 37 is following us. I suppose we won't be able to see that far back. Yeah, you can see it going along the goods lines there. I wonder if that will catch us up at any point whilst we're stopping at every station. Next stop, Middlesbrough. It probably won't catch us up in that time, I don't think. short distance between two stations. <laughs> it's, this is obviously the original South Bank station I'm guessing. See how it sort of goes onto the track. I 
do love the veil textures though. Interesting, the uh, giant sound randomly changed there. Conversation that we're not stopping at. Is this one cargo fleet? I believe it is. Let's get the train slowed down for the 35 limit. Again, that's the same generic signal box I've seen a few times. And also crossing gates that if you want to, you can apparently just walk around, which is... I'll be honest, it's not great. That that's a really sort of simple thing, unless that's realistic, which I very much doubt it is. Bit of a shame. It's the small details like that that uh, sort of kill the immersion a little bit. You got the uh, transporter bridge over there. It's nice to see that most of the details are in. It's good to see all the dock cranes and the work that's gone into that. Far behind us, actually, just coming out of the yards. We have around four minutes late. Which is my fault. Again, decent station. We've still got people getting out the wrong side of the train. That's good detail. You can actually go right down into the subway again, as you can on some of the other stations on these routes. Let's see where that freight's got to. Looks like it's probably going to be held at a signal. Decent detail. Oh, there's a 37 uh, working going the other way. Again, it does look like it's a, a generic signal box. And I think really the signal boxes are one of the things you should be doing the full assets of. That doesn't look overly generic, but it must surely be missing a sign at some point there. Can't imagine you'd have middles per signal box without any signage on it. Next stop, then Farnaby, which is just over three miles away. Thirty seven going the other way.
it's on the rear loco. From a sound point of view, that sounds absolutely bang on though. Decent make of wagons. Not entirely sure you need 237s for that rate, but it's a. There you go. And the other, the other set is actually following us now. It's only about uh, three or four minutes behind, but I suspect it'll turn off and uh, go into T's yard rather than follow us to Eagles Cliff. I'm running about three minutes late at the moment. Theatre box on the signal there. Now, I'm sure that, unless there's two bridges that I'm, that I'm missing here somewhere, I'm sure that was up a minute ago. And I'm sure it was up earlier, so maybe that actually works, the transport bridge. Or maybe not. No, I was looking at the wrong one. It'd have been nice if that did work. That sounds good, just uh, sort of disturbing the uh, peace for a moment. All seems a bit quiet though. For the area that we're in, it seems a little bit sort of quiet. So we're coming on to Farnaby and T's yard. Would have been nice to see it a little bit busier, I think, but. The other argument you've got to put against that though is that we're missing a lot of the realistic locos to do that, so... If you fill it with locos, somebody would say that there shouldn't be that many locos there, or there shouldn't be that many wagons there, so yes. Not sure what all this grass is about on the main line. Seems a bit tall. Nice to see some of the uh, signals there, the ground signals and stuff. FPS is uh, in here, so I suspect that could be one of the reasons why we've got no uh, massive amounts of stock in the yard. I'm just going to ease off and take a little look around. A little fly around the depot. And this is Farnaby Depot. The home of the 37.5s, uh, uh, this particular set of 37.5s at the time. A few of them on shed. Don't know if you can actually go in the shed. It'd be brilliant if you could. Can't see any uh, open doors to get in though. Used to be presumably. Don't know when they took the turntable on. Overall, it's pretty good that. Overshoot on his hands because I was uh, messing about. It will be okay. going on four minutes late. So from here we're going across from uh, Middlesbrough, from Farnaby, across to Darlington. Nearly halfway in. Stations from here become less frequent. Try as I open the doors on the other side. 
probably got 12 people on the track now. There we go. Got there eventually. Nice to see a different row of shops, that's a different row of shops than what we uh, saw at uh, Saltburn. <coughs> Overall I think this, uh, this add-on is really good. It does still have that stigma of TSW about it where it's, it's sort of a little bit dead, but overall, it's decent. Next stop then Eagles Cliff, three miles away. The thing I don't get is when you stop at the station, why do all these people up here? Where are they coming from? I just missed the train. This sort of evening effect that's uh, coming over now with the uh, shadows. That's good. And the light is sort of fading as the sun's dropping down. I do feel that there's sometimes the light on this is maybe a little bit too harsh, but uh, otherwise it's not too bad. So we're in the 45 limit now. Across the river. Ooh, is that a signal box with a sign on it? It is. Bowsfield. Ah, some pretty cool uh, other sounds there as well from the cars. Although it's a shame that the cars on the road aren't actually making any noise, but that's a good signal box. It's nice to see a different model making appearance. Rather than the same one all the time. service. Good to see a two car unit as well. Shows that both two car and three car are utilised. Wearing headphones with these um, track drone sounds, you can really sort of hear the first drone as you go over and then you sort of in the background you hear the right, the uh, Trying as a second, as back of the car's going over it, so it's staggered. That's really, uh, really realistic. So my mate, my, my mate points out to me uh, yesterday was how cool these textures are. I love that. That's awesome. The one thing I do keep seeing with these routes from Train Sim World is that they do keep improving, which is encouraging because this again I feel is better than Transpennine. I feel like it's gone that next little level up. With a little bit more detail to the streets and stuff to the fields. Just 
top of Eagles Cliff, which we're coming into now. So we've got the right-hand feather here for the junction for the line to Darlington. If we were going to carry on to the East Coast Main Line in North Allerton, um, during, the, during the East Coast North Allerton and head towards York, then you'd uh, have no feather at this signal. I would really love to see to see um, this extended down the east coast towards York and from Darlington down towards York and have, I don't know, a Delta or something like that. Probably is a little bit out of here but because this is late 80s, that was 1970s and early 1981, so 1981, so well, up to 1982 technically. But I think that could be really well done in this game. Maybe that's what the world do wonder, who knows. Decent enough detail on the station, the signs up there in the right place. Oh, very well done. Car park's nicely detailed as well. Thirty limit on this junction that we're just about to go over. Only a short distance to Allen's West Station, less than half a mile already. That freight did actually follow right behind us though. Does that mean it'll go through, uh, I wonder if that means it'll go through Eagles Cliff right behind us. It'd be quite cool if he had the signal literally and we, we could have held him up essentially. Yeah, he's got the signal to follow us actually. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's like less than a, a minute behind. I'm trying to do two things at once. I'm trying to stop our train whilst watching this. Around our ones west, then. I 
through semaphores around here. There's a signal box on the side there. That's nice, but I'm a Peter. The 37 is right behind. Next up then, the 37 should leave that station, uh, that signal in just a minute. We'll move down to the next signal. A few sidings down here. Good to see some good rusted track as well. So we've got four miles to Dinsdale at the moment. Of a mile to the next signal, which should allow the uh, 37s to follow behind us. Here they come. And they should pretty much get a clear run from here. I mean, in theory, we should be at Dinsdale now, so we're actually quite late. We're a good four or five minutes later. I think mean, it's cool how the game interacts like that, though. It's not like a train sim scenario, but I think it's quite good how it reacts to stuff like that. But it'd be nice to see the AI sometimes run a bit late. So say you were driving this 37, you see the AI running late. It's obviously still got a red at the minute. So I've pressed the uh, cab button and it's actually loading us back in because we've changed area. That's quite good how you don't have the... Because um, in train sim there I'd have already been obviously moved down the track because there's a, about a one and a half mile limit to how far you can go away from the cab. But there it actually let me go more than that. It let me go nearly two miles. With, and it wasn't pushing me or anything. I pressed the button to go into back into the cab and it's, you know, it's quite good how it, it lets you uh, do that. the next signal so the uh, class 37 working will again follow us in a minute. Weird, I was sure I saw a gate on that side a minute ago. Not quite sure where the gate went. <laughs> I'm certain there was a gate there. It's a shame with the free cam how you can't go a bit further away. It's sort of restricted to staying within the boundaries. You can't do long shots, you got to do the sort of near the train shot all the time. First seven are still quite a way off, so we'll get back in the cab. So is this, uh, I'm guessing, is Teesside Airport Station? Another one of the uh, least used station in Britain. I think this is second place. Now a good comparison between Train Sim World and Train Sim 2019. It's cool as a plane there. A good comparison between Train Sim World and Train Sim 2019 is that this route is in Diamond Porter simulations. Um, 
now I've finished England route. And I don't think this is much better than that, in all honesty. I think that Darren's detail and up for close is actually, you know, it's, it's on Paris, it's, you know, it's just as good. The fact the actual detailing is actually better because he's working with less of equipment. But certainly this is a very good representation. It looks decent enough, but absolutely no doubting about that. It looks very good. I think that's actually a credit to Darren and how good his route is. I mean, it is good to see how good the detail is up close here. You know, I got the little roundabout thing in here, and we've got the fencing in and stuff like that. So it's great to see the actual quality of all the assets. Let's slow the train down. Then as I've just managed to miss a 30 mile an hour limit altogether. Might as well just wait here for the class 37s to pass through. As soon as though they are literally just around this corner. There they are. Interesting to see how they react. See if they actually slow down as they see the yellow signal. Certainly coming around the corner at a decent speed. I'm not sure about the exhaust at that speed. Uh, that, that idly, they seen that much exhaust. Not really noticing any bogey sounds on the uh, hoppers there as they're going over. You hear all the wheel flats, but you don't actually hear any sort of giant sounds. Which is a bit strange. I've got another loading thing again here whilst I uh, get back in the cab. So we're just coming into Dinsdale Station. Not far from here to Darlington then. And that'll be the 1848 service from Saltburn going the other way. Certainly a busy period with uh, three trains on the same section of track. We're waiting there, we can actually go back this way and have a look at the uh, junction down here. More freight lines up there, but it looks like they're out of use. I do love the feeling of that, it does feel very realistic. I think that's certainly an upgrade on train simulator when you look at that from that sort of view. The 101 there coming through the uh, trees and the sounds and everything. So just three miles to Darlington now. It's nice how the uh, sound of the ambience, that the wind noise and the grass and everything and the, the bird noise just sort of takes back over. It'd be nice to hear the trains a bit further away but it's nice how there's that sort of blend. So we're just coming up to the signal now, so the 37 should get the road in a minute. That's it, it's now moving.
We're trying back onto our train now. As soon as they're on the last sort of uh, just over two miles now to Darlington. Nice if you could see the signals a bit further away. You can't even see a light on that one. And we're only 500 yards away. It's literally only just seeing the light appearing through Z fighting. You should be able to see that way back at the end of the straight. If you zoom in, I think to the naked eye you wouldn't see it. But you see, it's little things like that where Train Sim 2019 is still doing it better. In that game you can see signals from a mile away in some cases nearly, the light. I think there's areas where that light like, like there, so where uh, it needs to this needs to catch up a little bit. Overall I think this is certainly uh, still gaining ground. We just have to get the tools and hopefully some multiplayer as well because that's the sort of thing that can help to build a basis for the future but really we need the tools. Without those it's uh, going to struggle to build from a creative point of view. Especially when they're competing against their own game in Train, sim sim in train Simulator. The grass is a little bit strange, I saw it comes in at certain points, like here and then it comes in again in a second. It doesn't it just I mean, it shouldn't shouldn't be touching the sleepers anyway, but it's sort of weird. I keeps doing that. Can't say I've noticed that on the other trains in World War Oops, to be honest. We're just approaching Darlington. 0.7 miles to go. Theatre box indicating platform 4. We actually went into the 30 limit then before we even got to the 30 sign. And look at the grass there across the track. That's on the East Coast Main Line. It shouldn't be there. We'll have a little look at Downton Station when we uh, come to a stand. It's a decent run on this uh, route though, I mean uh, that's taken us a good hour and, we should take an hour and two minutes, we're a little bit late, but a good hour's run there. Quite a varied route as well because you go from the towns to the industry to the countryside as well. I can see in that respect why they would have chosen it to uh, base the route on. It's the first AWS alert we've had. I mean, this uh, certainly there's potential to do something to York here. When you think you've got the 47, you've got the Peak, we've got Mark IIs, we've got parcels wagons, we've got the 101, and all we really need is uh, HST, and you can fill this route for an era almost there if you've extended it through to York. So there's a lot of potential. I like the parcels wagons that's um, left around the station. That's quite good. 
So this um, this train then forms the 1815 to um, Saltburn. This one will be a Middlesbrough service. I'm not sure what one it'll be. Fairly decent station model. Nothing out of this world with it. Not up to that 37. Just cutting on the curve now, so we'll, we'll conclude the video as we watch that. It's a nice uh, little bit of shunt signal there. Fantastic textures on that as well. Look at that, you can almost see the, you can literally see the 3D sort of effect on that. It's one of the best signs I've ever seen in a simulator. you got the turntable as well at Darlington. No idea if it's operational, I suspect it's not. I'm not with those bushes and you said I'm not going to be using it anyway. It's a nice model though. And over here you have the signal box. That custom. Not very sure. So that's where they're going to conclude this video. I um, hope you've enjoyed watching. Tees Valley Line is now out on uh, Trains in World as an add-on. You get the Class 101 free cars we've shown, Class 101 two car, you get the Class 37.5, you get the steel wagons I've seen there. You also get an 08 and some HEA hoppers. Route runs from Darlington to Saltburn, includes all the stuff at Fauna Bay, TG Yard, all the industries around Middlesbrough. Uh, which are interactive. Check out our, our other video which featured the, featured the Class 37 and also the loading operations at Redcar. And don't forget to watch us on Twitch and catch us on Wednesdays and uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. It's trainsim.tv Sorry, it's twitch.tv forward slash trainsimtv underscore Tom. And uh, thank you all for watching guys. Goodbye.